All right guys, welcome to today's video. It's a bit of an impromptu one. We are heading down towards Cork to collect my Corvette from Darren McNamara, which we will be revealing at round one of Driftmasters. But although we just need to make our car aesthetically good, all the boys who are competing have to actually test all their cars. And it just so happens that a lot of them are in Cork. So we're down here at Watergrass Hill. James is testing his S14.5, is that what we call it? Nine. Point nine. Point nine, Dave. Very, you gotta do the math on this. <laughs> Carry the three, take away the S, yeah. No, point. Get, you get the calculator, Mike, we'll get it. So it's an S14.9. James is gonna do some runs today. We always see these videos of James doing mad runs, but he's actually got no body panels on today, which I think makes the car look a little bit like a go-kart. And we're gonna watch some runs of James Dean testing a car, and it's gonna be fun. <laughs> Interestingly, I was watching, so we've always seen the videos of you just testing, driving around, and we just think, ah, oh, he's just drifting for the day, it's great fun, but there's a bit of method to the madness. Yeah. So, your timing runs around Watergrass Hill, and I'm assuming, because you can't twin battle anyone until you get to the event, how would you know if you're faster or slower? Is that what you're doing, basically changing things on the car? Yeah, pretty much, and it's also interesting because we come here, you know, probably once or twice a year, every year, with each car and test them so you can kind of compare what we've changed in this car over the off season and see if it's better or worse to what we were last year so it's just making little adjustments and seeing if it's actually making a difference because we don't have a second car to tandem with here so it's just a good way of like That's seeing clever, are you because going I was just, forwards or backwards i was like why is he timing the run and i was like oh sure how would you know if it's faster or slower and then you time all the cars you kind of know which car is faster, which yeah. car is slower, but you'd also be able to change suspension. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's, it's like a, uh, what's, the, what's the word? A benchmark. Exactly, and we played with this car quite a lot, even last year during the season, trying to get every bit of grip, you know, out of the car as possible. So we're just, you know, making different changes to see if it's better or worse. Here's an interesting question that I've always wanted to, so you've been dri driving a version of an S14 now for probably... 40 years. 48 years. <laughs> 48 years Before yeah. they even made the S14. Yeah, yeah. We what, have developed but car. what I think is mad is that you, when you first got an S14, had suspension and all these different things in the car, and now you have kind of like how have you progressed the car so much in terms of pace over those years when the, the components seem to me kind of similar? Yeah, so there's lots of different things changing. So, working with companies like Wisefab and BC, they're always you know making small little adjustments, and uh, we've developed loads of different parts, especially with Wisefab. So, that's a big reason why we come to these kind of days and test to see is the steering going better or worse um, and then rear suspension like moving weight around doing different things to see what's the best and that's because you know, I would have thought of. maybe five or six years ago we got to a point where I'm like that's just, that's it now like what more can you do with a drift car but they yeah. keep getting faster yeah. so it's kind of one of those things where there is still something to be gained it's like any motorsport I suppose if you're looking at a racing car they probably had 40 years to do that but you're kind of doing it bit by bit but it's mad to see because I was just saying to the guys when we were standing beside like when we watched you drive the S14 the previous version of this car mm. it doesn't look anywhere near as fast as this does now compared to like 8-10 years ago and it's yeah. mad the difference in that time yeah. of how fast everything's got it's crazy and especially even you know, we see it every year there's new tires coming out new different things coming out so we're trying to stay with you know keep up with people so it's uh it's definitely a challenge but um it's always fun to to try to keep up with what everyone else is doing let's go pushing the sport forward well we're going to do what we do best here is stand around looking at you doing cool drifts that's pretty much we, we've been nailing that for the last half hour <laughs> so we're going to continue <laughs>
skateboard. <laughs> it's called a tire. <laughs> no, 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 no. Did I get you top, dude? No, this was already dirty. Don't take any credit for that. We got new yellow hoodies coming into the shop and I was uh, stress testing them today in when we were over at the new place and I just leaned on some oily stuff and I was like, well, that's me for the day. <laughs> James, best of luck in the season ahead. Thank you very much. Masters is coming up. James on his channel did a little test between his road car and his drift car to see which was faster, so you can check that out. He's got a lot of look and say he's ready for the season. Yeah, so you know the way like most human beings are like, what is it, 90% water? James is like 99% fluid at this stage. <laughs> We're gonna go down the road and check out some more people getting ready for Drift Masters. James, yeah, we'll thanks, see you next thanks week. Thanks for stopping by, that was good timing. It was good fun, we, we, we had some hours to kill and what a way to do it, watching James shred in more aggressive. So we have come down to Group D after watching some James Dean drifting for two very important reasons. Well, one very important reason and one not as important reason. And actually three reasons. So one is I need leads for my RX-7 FC convertible. That's the reason I haven't been driving it is because we NCT'd it, it passed and then it started misfiring, which we reckon are the leads, which Darren has a spare set. The second very important reason was we collected the Corvette. Um, let's just say, I'm gonna make a big bold claim and say it's the maddest looking drift car on the planet. I would um, stand by that statement. And we are gonna reveal it in the intermission between whatever time there's free and Drift Masters on the Sunday at the Drift Game stand. Darren has worked his magic on it. Magic or madness, I'm not sure which, but you'll see oh. for yourselves. Oh. <laughs> and then the third reason is we wanna have a look at stuff that he's got working on and we're gonna give you a bit of an update on the S15, which has been, well, to be fair to Darren, I've stopped my own car being done by doing my own car in the meantime so i sent the corvette down on top of it and darren's been very busy so it's been a slow progress but however until we get the new premises i have nowhere to put it so we're kind of okay with it being uh, here take some, longer then some progress it has been a lot of progress well, right, there's been hundreds of hours spent hundreds on you on you well on, on, you. on, on the corvette there has i will give him that but also the s15 for a new engine as well. we have a new engine so i saw a picture of this i haven't seen in the flesh we have, so I have to show people, because if they haven't watched the channel recently, we have to remind them that we are putting a 3S GE MR2 engine, which is usually, is it called transversely in the back of a car? Jesus Christ. Transversely. You've been revising that yeah. one. I said, oh, oh, I've, been three, I've been two hours in the van just going, transversely, transversely. No, so, longitudinally. Oh, and no, and now, we're, now we're going to put it latitudinally. Oh. No. That well, this exist. is what we're doing. Yeah, so this is what essentially this engine looks like. And the idea is we have a very clean, very nice S15 spec S, which we've now converted to, well, we are converting to a full link ECU system, BC racing coilovers. We're going to put strong wheels on it. It has a kit. It's been painted, all that stuff. Very clean child. And we're putting in this engine, which is an unusual one that Darren has convinced me to do. So it's not a 3S GTE. It's a 3S GE with a head gasket to lower the compression and we're doing a load of custom work, and it looks like a poo engine, which is what my problem was from the start, but if you give a little bit of imagination and some shiny parts, it doesn't look as poo. This is like the um, art, art tag. Before. Yeah, before and after. And after. Art tag. They're an unusual engine with this sort of stuff, but in the black, I think it actually looks really nice, and then we have- Well, this is, I put this on just for the time being. This is gonna be modified because the bonnet doesn't close. So, <laughs> so it's going to be different, to be different but I like shiny things and mm. I wanted to have a sh the engine not look boring no, and now we have got isn't all that going to get covered anyways you have a clear cover for that right clear cover for, oh, for Dave yeah. he likes purple I like a bit of bit of jazziness in the engine bay because let's be honest it does add a lot if you've got a bit of color and you can see him spinning around and suits and it suits gray, yeah. the gray and everything so it's like looks really good we've cleaned up the engine so is this the actual engine yep done built built done. yeah new king racing bearings you've got your head gasket which is kind of your decompression plate 
ARP bolts in it, uh, the head has been totally reworked and you have your racing time belt and your HKS pulleys and everything so it's still very very standard but decompressed for boost. Which is what, so again, exactly right. you saw us do the S14, we got 500 horsepower, this we wanted, I wanted the car to be a very nice road car, 300 horsepower, yeah. Yeah. comfortable, not too crazy and something you want to hop in every day and you're not compromising something or other like the other car is super low and wide and they don't drive they're an experience to drive but driving every day is a bit of a pain yeah, it's bad <laughs> <laughs> but this it's is an just experience be a nice s15 so the easiest way of describing it is that i've got three crazy sylvias that are all on air with all sorts of madness on them that i think are just beautiful looking cars and then i'm building three cars that i actually want to drive on the road which is the rx7 fc our or 32 four-door and this S15. They're reasonably nice to just get in and go for a spin and enjoy the car. Mm. So they're not all show cars because you kind of everything doing the same job. So that's kind of the idea. So this was a crazy idea, but this car is actually a nice car. It's actually got it. We got a little, little, little bits and parts for it. We actually have a vented bonnet over there for it. We're going to do a couple of bits and pieces to tidy it up. Me and Darren talked about changing the color of the engine bay because it's a really weird yeah. Nardo gray that for some reason Nissan went, ah, sure, we won't be bothered doing the engine, mate. We'll be looking at it. And that's, that's the problem now is everyone's going to be looking at it because they want to see the engine and we want to make that all look a lot nicer. Take the whole thing apart now and paint it, which is a disaster. <laughs> we only did that recently. <laughs> it is a disaster. Our least favourite job, painting. But we'll get it done. This is your new intake, which is going to be hanging outside this, which is going to be really nice. And, and then, then we've got a Walton Motorsports Manifold. Yeah, uh, where did I put the bits? Oh, here. So there's the collector for it, a billet collector. It's got, we're working with Walton and it's got his name in it. Fancy. And uh, this is your plate to make it. So it's all been pre-made, laser cut and uh, nicely shaped for the ports and everything. I was trying to mount the turbo uh, top mount, but it looks like it's going to be bottom mount now. Because just the architecture of the engine isn't allowing us to get the two front primaries down and up. Which of course you thought of Josh. And, uh, Josh is telling you that monster. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this from the start. Yeah, saying, but well, what about the primaries, guys? <laughs> the primaries have nowhere to go. And we didn't listen to him. We didn't listen to him, but here we are. But that is your gearbox and everything. So, so does yeah. an awful lot of things have been... Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's an unusual engine conversion, so it does take time. And I think a lot of people who watch videos on the internet, there's a, a time chop, which happens quite a bit, if, where you go boom, boom, and it's done. Where when you're trying something different or trying something new it takes time it takes man hours and it also if you're doing it to last be right and actually be a good job and obviously we're going to rewire the whole car put in all the link ecu stuff modernize it put in a link ecu dash there's quite a bit being done yeah. even though the car itself i think on the outside is going to look like a nice s15 there's a lot going on underneath from suspension arms to everything else so we've got stuff working on this we're going to get back to this later in the year because obviously darren is getting a lot of stuff ready for the irish drift championship drift masters and your car is going to drift masters yep. in a week doesn't yeah. look doesn't like, look like it right now, now. Yeah, I know. and do you know what's great about this one it was done and, and it was working mm -hmm. and then you decided sure we just tear all that apart and we'll it's put like the corvette it's a bit like the Corvette. Like, it was, yeah, it was do you know what it's like? It's like Father Ted, you know, when he goes at the rover with the hammer. <laughs> yeah. and you're like, I nearly had it there. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing's gone again. So why have you taken the rad out and put two small rads in the back? That's all I'm asking the question here. Hmm. Right, well, this year we're shifting weight around in the car, so the car works really well. Um, it actually works really badly in the weight, which is one issue we have to solve for this year. But then we're messing with the balance of the car um, and hoping to make it even quicker again by changing the balance of the car. So you do remember the fuel tank was in here, yeah, and it's now going under here. So you're putting the weight to the, and this is me stretching now, but okay. putting the weight on the rear because right in the wet you right need foot. the weight on the back of the car to get grip. Uh, it's going to be a, a good side effect for the wet, yeah. yeah. That, that is not the fundamental problem in the wet, but um, we are shifting the weight more rearward. We were concerned because we, we, we built this, um, you built it in my head and then you don't know until you get on the scales and you sit into yeah. it and everything exactly where you are because it's really difficult to build a whole car on the scales um, True. and know what every body panel weighs when it's all done. Here's, here's an honest question. Do you think it's, because Driftmasters is next week, mm -hmm. that's probably a gathering of the fastest drift cars in Europe. Mm -hmm. This has been a standout fast drift car mm -hmm. from its inception to its build. Is, is, that going, is this going to be faster, do you think, than anything else there, or will it be comparable? Because it's obviously a lot of development in the car now, and it was fast. Dwayne McKeever drove it, was that mm -hmm. last year, when mm -hmm. he borrowed the car, when he brought it to the car show, and it ended up in the middle of the event. <laughs> um, but even at, you know, we did the LZ Fest, we did different events, even Jap Fest, and I chased this car in with the Corvette, and I was like, 
forget about it. It's like you had warped time in front of me and I was yeah. like, I'm just going to wait here till he comes back around. But it's a case of, is this all about speed, trying to make the car as fast as possible? Or is it, are you compromising handling for speed? Well, it's part of its development yeah. because we are going, redesigning the exhaust manifold is going to make more power. And when you make more power, you'll upset the balance of it the way it was. So we're going to put more grip in the rear and then the balance will come back. Now we won't have it done for drift mass. It's going to be an ongoing thing through this year. But now that the cell is in there, the original huge red doesn't fit. Or else it'll be outside the car up here. I know. So we had to do logic, something yeah. anyway. So then I always wanted to do this. So what's the advantage of this? Mm. Less space. Nothing really. I mean, it actually, <laughs> the advantage, it's actually like, it's probably about the same size overall as what the red was in there, so it should work fine. Um, I've always wanted to do a V-mount because you, you think about drifting, you're always at angle and you'll put a in straight the, red. In, in theory, theory, it makes but a it bit of make, sense. It doesn't make a difference oh. um, because we always mount a straight red and we never have yeah. a problem. There's always access to air, but then maybe half of it gets absolutely no air. Then. <laughs> but the fans do their job and, and take the air once it's available. But it is cool. It is different. Um, Mishimoto came on board and just sent us all the stuff we wanted to kind of try it and see whatever. But, but but uh, a lot of people will ask the question when they watch this video, and I'm just I'm going to summarize Darren from what I, you're pushing boundaries here. This is the point. Oh, like, you're not like okay, this is how I see it from the outside. And you can agree or disagree. It's the fact that you've done kind of a lot of drifting over twenty something years now. So for you to be interested in it at this stage, you can do all the customer cars. I would say to the best of your ability, to the best of what's known in competition. But I think on your stuff and now my Corvette, which you guys can see. It's about going a bit further than that because it's not exciting or interesting to build something no. just, especially with you're not a consistent competitor. Like you're not trying to go and win Drift Masters. You're not going to, you're kind of no. doing select events. So you want to turn up in something different, cool, and maybe figure something out that no one has figured out over the last 20 odd years. Maybe it's, that's, it's a, that's the kind of way well, I see it. We're known for being different at this stage. Yeah. Like this car came out, it is a Sylvia, which is very difficult to be different. Yes. But the thing was amazing, really. It, it's such a cool car. And everywhere you look, there's something going on, just like the Corvette right now. And then... Very, very different. Just You'll to see. do something. This is something I always want to do. It's totally different again. No one has done it. Um, it works sweet. Does loads of access to get at everything. There's loads of space. You know, we're not covering up anything. We're not compromising anything. It should be perfect job. We're developing this car. It's going to maybe have a little bit of a new look by mid this year. So if someone maybe hasn't watched LZ. previous videos, I just want to show the actual mm. front of the car because this is... Um, it's kind of stripped now. It's kind of stripped down. It doesn't look as nice. So it's a big spider of a, a manifold. Mm -hmm. But um, So this is a sprint car motor from the US. Yeah, small block Chevy. So yeah, we're just doing some maintenance stuff on it right now. But it is going to change. Does speak spider, manifold, octopus, whatever. That's going to change into two much more conventional ones. That was another just gimmicky yeah. experiment thing. <laughs> so well, we like it because that's what makes it cool. It's like yeah. you, because Darren runs a business that does up like mo that modifies and fabricates cars. There's stuff that no one can afford. <laughs> <laughs> and then he does it to obviously some of it is attention because that's the point, it's and some of it is fun so, and some of it is functional. And I think we were making the point today because you guys will see the Corvette that nothing Darren has done to the Corvette is going to make it more competitive or me a better driver. But it'll get a lot more attention, it'll look cool, and it'll inspire people to be interested in the car, which maybe gets forgotten about a little bit in drifting now, because I always say it has to be function and form, mm -hmm. or else it's just function and it's boring, because we've all seen drifting at this stage now where just mm -hmm. function is like... Well, it's nice to, like, it allows you to be so creative, the, yep. the rule books do. You can be just so creative with it. Most championships, you're really restricted as a car builder, totally restricted on what you can do, rallying or whatever you want to talk about so this allows us to just go a bit mental and change things and then we're just kind of bringing out cars that no one has seen or yep. ideas that no one has seen and it just it's wacky and it's it, it gets me interested because monkey see monkey do bolt on this kit bolt on that kit but on those wheels you know I, but that's the it's, boring, like. it's the like um generic drift car to a certain extent and then it's driver versus driver but i have always found that when someone does something different and you guys can comment below and if you agree or not with me but like I think unless we're pushing the boundaries a little bit with cars, we're all going to get bored of them because almost everything has been done. And I've been noticing that on YouTube especially, the people doing something a bit more interesting or a bit more mm -hmm. quirky gets a lot more attention because people just want to see something different. And we're all the same. We've, mm -hmm. I think we're now in 2023. How much drifting have we watched? How many cars have we watched? How many body kits, wheels have we watched? Mm -hmm. I like 
way the Corvette looks then, I hope you guys do when it's revealed. I want something that a child would just, the child in me even goes, wow. This is a bit of a random episode because we were running down to see the Corvette. Unfortunately, we couldn't show it to you in this episode, but believe me, it's going to be worth the wait when you guys see it at Drift Masters outside the Drift Game shop on the Sunday. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to see everyone else. If your reaction is the same as mine, it's going to probably break the internet. And I, I could take credit for that because it's my car, but this man's taking all the credit for breaking the my internet again. Know. The man has no sympathy for the internet at all. Or carbon fiber. Or carbon fiber. <laughs> <laughs> or all my new panels. That, that is can... safe to say. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the car that I sent down came back in the van today, separately to the car. But anyway, you'll see it next week. Thank you guys for watching. A bit of a random one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Next video, we are going to get back to some of the work we have in the shed. And we're counting down to Drift Masters, where we have a very special guest coming to our shed next week that I know you guys are going to be excited about. It's so next me. week... It's not Darren, because <laughs> we'll run him if he comes down. He, he ruined my Corvette by chopping it all up. Anyway, you'll see all that. Uh, next week's going to be a very exciting week. It's our first event week of the year, so it's going to start getting crazy on the channel. So make sure you hit subscribe, leave a comment below, and we'll see you then.